the gravity of the time is such that every new avenue of peace, no matter how dimly discernible, should be explored. Never before in history has so much hope for so many people been gathered together in a single organization. You will provide a great share of the wisdom, of the courage, and the faith which can bring to this world lasting peace for all nations and happiness and well-being for all men. Hi, this is Michael Crabb, and I'm joined today by John Chapel. Um, as I think our listeners know, usually titans of nuclear is um, a feature of folks that are in the nuclear industry. Their backgrounds, their experiences, what they do. Um, today we're starting something a little bit different, um, our first Nuclear Nexus series. Um, and this one will be focused on um, a really timely subject, data centers. Um, kind of excited to dig in. Yeah, it's kind of hard, you know, to pull ourselves out of the nuclear world and realize we're adding, you know, solutions to the marketplace where are the best ways that that fits in. I think this is a good, you know, subject matter to dive down in on. D data centers are a perfect match for nuclear and yeah, looking forward to the conversation. Yeah, and it's funny, I, um, uh, <laughs> I'm sure your parents are the same, right? Putting something on the cloud uh, as a new parent, I think I've got 4,000 pictures over the year um, that are sitting on the cloud. Um, but the cloud's not actually in the cloud. It's infrastructure that's built in the real world and has real requirements and real implication on the environment and the community that we're in. It's the reason we're able to communicate to our audience right now. Um, and so uh, I think the intersection of how nuclear power can impact the cloud and the data centers that power that and enable it is really quite interesting. Um, we'll see. Yeah, and I'm looking forward to throughout this series diving down into experts, learning more about the applications, where nuclear fits into this data center space and how it can be leveraged to really expand the infrastructure profile and also you know, facilitate the new AI development that's really driving the growth. Yeah, and that's a great transition to the scale of the conversation, right? So we'll have a host of different folks that are from the nuclear space, from the data center space, the development space, perhaps even the political and regulatory space, talking about how these two industries can come together. And it's the scale of both of these things that is so tremendous, right? I think data center power uh, globally would be a top 20 energy consumer in the world uh, from a country perspective. And, and that's today compared <laughs> to where it's going to go with AI, you know, having a 10 to 20 fold increase in that power consumption to be able to run all this compute for these training of these models. Yeah. No, it's really, it's really crazy. I mean, I think some of the stats um, that our team pulled together right, are, are worth emphasizing um, that in 2022, data centers used um, 300 terawatt hours, so about 1% of total global energy consumption. Um, in the UK alone, they're 3% of the UK energy use. Um, and as you said, that's just the tip of the iceberg, right? We're going to use 10x more moving forward. Um, okay, but so what are the, some of the things that we need to focus on, I guess, as we talk to these experts? What can folks expect? Yeah, I mean, I, I think uh, really tackling and understanding how nuclear can really come in and solve those issues, uh, the immediate issues, but also the long-term issues as it scales out. I think, you know, in the near term, there's a lot of issues around uh, power sus uh, sustainability, uh, being able to get that carbon-free power, but also just grid constraints and being able to meet the needs of this growing demand and that's coming from this industry. Yeah, I think the grid constraint one is one that isn't fully understood in the nuclear space, right? It's mm -hmm. not really a problem that we have or have dealt with en masse, but you know, more and more I'm hearing that that's really driving data center locations and data center developments. Um, and there's been a few recent announcements with that intersection, right? The uh, Amazon acquisition of the Talon data center um, mm -hmm. outside of their nuclear facility. And that's uh, just an example of, okay, well, there's an existing power generation unit. How can we locate near them in order to benefit from the power? You know, Microsoft, Google, many of these folks are, are, have similar campaigns. Um, but yeah, tell us more. What, like, what, what do we mean when we say grid constraints? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, legacy nuclear, that's large bills has always been... Uh, 
long-term planning and ability to basically connect to the grid, their full load, they're able to plan that. As we move to more distributed generation with you know small modular reactors or micro modular reactors, uh, the ability to be able to connect to the grid becomes a larger issue that can't be planned and you wanna be able to get those grid connections quickly. And with renewables coming in, you have tons of different energy generation sources trying to connect to the grid all at the same time and that causes a long backlog. Yeah. Yeah, and it's really both sides of the equation, right? Where uh, us on the supply side and in the nuclear space, you hear about the supply issues, right? Mm -hmm. The generator's yeah. trying to connect, but load has to connect as well in this sort of complex transmission system. Um, and both parties are frustrated because uh, I think the bottom line is there just isn't enough capacity, right? There isn't enough mm -hmm. space in the straw, so to speak, to have as many electrons that are needed. Right, I think that's where nuclear can come in because it can do behind the meter solutions, connect directly to uh, that power consumer, especially those data centers, be able to facilitate their growth while they're still waiting for that grid connection. Yeah, totally. Uh, and um, it's cool that we're seeing that actually in practice, right? Like mm -hmm. literally there are running data centers that use nuclear power. And so I'm um, excited to scale that together. Well, seeing it in practice and also seeing, you know, a lot of the hyperscalers realize that this is a significant strategy that they need to deploy and building their own internal teams to evaluate and prosecute that strategy. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, well, that's great connectivity. We'll have real experts talking about that over the coming weeks. There's some other really key value propositions, I think, at the intersection of both nuclear and data centers. Um, you know, I think a key one is price volatility, right, or price reliability in this mm -hmm. case. Right, exactly. I, I think, you know, when you're thinking about data center development and the economics of their development, power consumption is a large cog to what they're selling. So they need to have that one reliability of what their cost is going to be. So under long term power purchase agreements, you might be able to get that from solar or wind. But since they are intermittent resources, you still have to understand how to balance that and manage that price risk for when those uh, technologies are not producing. But with nuclear being that physical baseload power source, you're able to really kind of get that consistent profile. Yeah, fixed cost is really important. And I've sort of observed that there, there's almost wrong way risk, right? When you've contracted a low price for renewables, well, when renewables are on, they tend to all be on and market price is really low, right? Mm -hmm. right. Um, and then when they're off, your PPA does nothing for you, but energy prices go through the roof. And so you're sort of paying too much in both circumstances and nuclear can really create a fixed profile for consumers who, as you said, a large part of their customer mm -hmm. wallet is energy. Yeah, and with the changing landscape and you know generation sources, connection backlogs, understanding how that's going to affect the market is nearly impossible. So the volatility in the marketplace is only going to become more extreme as we move forward. Absolutely, and then we can, and then right, then we can layer on top the desire to be sustainable on top of all of this, right? Right, exactly. Um, and so, yeah, I think I think from a uh, there's really a global recognition of nuclear's role to play in a sustainable future. Um, and the way I see it, there really is no other option. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I think we've touched on some of the, you know, uh, reliability and security, but also being able to have that consistent power load. When you're running these models, you have to run them. Some of them can take weeks or months to train. If you lose power and you stop running that model, that's loss of time, that's loss of revenue. You know, those are costs out the door you're not going to get back. Yeah. Well, and the reliability concern is obviously a key focus for data centers, even outside of the AI stuff, right? Like mm -hmm. uh, Instagram went down for two hours and everyone <laughs> right. freaked out, right? right. Um, yeah. I mean, with data centers, I think, yeah, even for just cloud services, I think I've heard, you know, some of these hyperscalers say that reliability is their main concern. You know, if you go to Google and the search bar isn't there, that is an absolute <laughs> critical importance to Google. It's always got to be up. It's always has to be available. So having these data centers rely on intermittent resources that might not be available when they need them is a, a critical risk that they have to manage. Yeah, and I'm kind of excited to dig in with some of these folks in the field doing this work. Um, reliability levels are different. Like being reliable means different things to different people, right? Mm -hmm. And we're in the nuclear industry very proud of 94, 95, 96 percent sort of uptime and reliability, but, right. but that's not 99.999%, right? right. Um, and there, there's always strategies on the back end. And I, you know, you hear about data centers adding N plus one, N plus two redundancy and having different strategies for how they manage that. And I think it's always gonna be a mix of different uh, energy sources and um, different solutions. 
but nuclear stands to really benefit and be a large lag of that solution. Yeah, really the anchor, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you can get 95% from one solution, then you can fill in the gap. Exactly. And you really were touching on size as well, right? That's maybe the, the final aspect in both the data center market and the nuclear space, and they're going in opposite directions, but I think they're meeting in the middle. Yeah, you know, I think to date, some cloud services have been, you know, 10 to 60, maybe even 100 megawatt uh, size for power consumption to be able to run those. But with the advent of AI, those are increasing by multiples. Now we're seeing 400, 600, 800 megawatt data centers being developed. Uh, that is a large power drain on the grid and requires a lot of planning. Uh, so I think, you know, there's definitely power sources like, you know, SMRs that can come in and meet that demand. Yeah. And I, I just think there's something poetic about, you know, historically focusing on 1200 megawatt pa nuclear power plants and 10 megawatt data centers. And yeah, we'll meet somewhere in the middle at 500 with N plus five reliability, right? Exactly. A, a fleet of nuclear power plants. Exactly. Um, yeah, really. No, it's really exciting. Um, and, and I think nuclear's ability to really be site agnostic is really important as well, right? Because data centers have requirements around latency, around proximity to, uh, to networks, uh, to network gateways. And um, so it'll be really interesting to see how the different business models evolve. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think with especially that's true for cloud. With AI, they have the ability to be a little bit more flexible because these are really spent training and doing, you know, uh, large compute without the need to connect to the uh, network. But as we see more of that build out, we'll see these large uh, distributed generation sources, whether that's AI or continuing to build the cloud infrastructure in large demand areas like major cities. Yeah. No, it's going to be really interesting to um, hear how these concepts are being implemented in real life, right? Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, we look forward to sharing some of those stories. I, I can't wait to hear from the experts. Yeah, me neither. I think I think you know the other thing that we didn't really touch on, but is the decarb goals. I you know, we hear a lot from data centers, and I think the the tech sector has been a leader in kind of pioneering solar, pioneering wind, and I think they're going to be a leader in pioneering nuclear. They're really pushing forward the market to demand that twenty four seven time match. To date, we've been trading credits, and you know, solar and wind has been able to trade some of those renewable energy credits. Uh, during when they're all producing, you know, mm. say solar in the middle of the day uh, to make people have a clean profile throughout the day. But if you really are going to push for a requirement for 24 hour, nuclear is really the one that stands to benefit the most. Yeah, I think there was um, at the time, Rex, everyone knew Rex was sort of a, an interim goal, right? Mm -hmm. And then we got really excited about it. We forgot it was an interim goal. Right. And then we realized we really weren't doing what we said we set out to do. Um, and so, yeah, it's going to be exciting to see how that pushes um, the data centers and others um, towards nuclear. Absolutely. Yeah, well, that wraps up our first episode of the Nuclear Nexus um, for data centers. Um, really relevant topic. Excited to hear from the experts. Um, and we'll have some other um, conversations in similar veins at a couple of key conferences coming up at Data Center World and Data Cloud ESG Summit. Uh, and I'm sure there'll be a few more as this starts to gain steam. Um, Looking forward to sharing those topics and more with uh, the audience in the future. And initiate at least a new approach to the many difficult problems that must be solved in both private and public conversation. If the world is to take off the inertia imposed by fear and is to make positive progress toward peace.